what's up? How have you been? Uh, it's Friday, and can I just say that God is good? Like, real talk. I know Fridays kind of don't really mean what they used to anymore with quarantine and everything happening, but I can still be glad that it's Friday, and you can still be glad that it's Friday, too. It was so nice to see some of you this past Sunday. Now that we're back having in-person services, there is just this whole new light that has come back alive in me. And for everyone that was able to come out and fellowship and worship and just, you know, let our spirits be on one accord, I thank you so much for stepping out on faith and coming to the house of the Lord to worship with your fellow believers. Um, I know some of, I know some people can't and, you know, just being wise and, you know, you're doing the right thing and staying home. My heart goes out to you as well. And I look forward to the day that you are able to come join in an in-person service. So let's get into it. The title of today's devotional has nothing, and I mean nothing to do with worry. Woohoo! That's because we conquered that already, right? Right? So instead, we are talking about the source of our motivation for everything that we do. So in case you didn't already know, as followers of Christ, any and everything that we do should be not unto men, but as unto the Lord. The focus scripture today is coming from the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 23 through 24. And it reads, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. I absolutely love that scripture. You know, there are a lot of things that you can read in the Bible that kind of take a lot of dissecting, right? A lot of meditation, a lot of prayer, just to kind of really have it sink in. But what I really like about this passage of scripture is that it basically just gets right to the point. So without further delay, we're going to talk about how everything that we do needs to be as unto the Lord. So I mentioned at the beginning of the video that Fridays have kind of taken on a new meaning. Well, for me, it's got an additional layer outside of just this whole being at home quarantine thing. So the main reason is that I am no longer an employee. I am no longer employed anywhere, and I officially have become a stay-at-home wife and mother. So um, I had already been home for a couple of weeks with the pandemic and self-quarantining and all that stuff. So I had been working from home, but I was still going to the office here and there, but I am officially like... This is my job now. And um, I kind of, with the nature of my employment, always knew that this time was a possibility. But I always kind of figured that if that job ended, that I would just do what I've always done and just go find another job. But for the foreseeable future, this is my position. I am a stay-at-home wife and mother. So the first thing I have already noticed in my short, and I do mean short time doing this, is that it is way easier said than done. Like, I can show you better than I can tell you. All right, so this is my reminder binder, and I hope you can see this. So this is what my life was looking like in February, and it was so organized, and I had like pretty much planned out and thought out everything, right? Well, quarantine <laughs> happened. March got kind of slim. April, just as slim. May, this was like peak remote working from home. And this was actually my last month of work. And then bam, I am not proud of this. But this is what has happened to me uh, since this quarantine situation started. Like I am a planner. OK, and I can actually be pretty aim retentive about a lot of things like you saw the whole color coding system that I have. Like these are my special pins. These are the only pins that I use to write in that book. So if we're at church and you come up to me and you say, hey, sis, we should get together this week. Like we should go have lunch and I, we can pick a day. We can pick a time. But if I don't have my special pins with me. I just have to remember it until I get home so that I can write it down in the same color system. Like that is my personality. But since I've been at home, a lot of things have kind of gotten just willy nilly. And it is so obvious when I can tell that I'm just like throwing things to the wind. Like when I was going to work every day, 
uh, before quarantine, like I had an appointed time that I had to be there. I had a certain appearance that I had to keep, you know, hair had to be combed, I had to be clean and presentable, all that stuff. I needed to be at my desk at a certain time. I had tasks, guidelines, I had goals, standards, all the things that I had to do. And at home, like, I don't really have any of that structure. I could, I mean, I have to put it in place, but it's not something that was given to me. You know, I'm in charge of my own time. I'm in charge of how this operation runs in the house. And so, like, when I would go to work, like, I knew why I was there. I knew what the task was at hand, and I showed up, and I had a good attitude, and I was kind, and I was really personable, really talkative, um, because I knew that I was there to minister. That job was an answered prayer, and I did not want to, um, you know, not take advantage of everything that the Lord had put in front of me while I was there. So, like, we had daily meetings, and I would use that time when it was my turn to run the meeting to facilitate. I would open up with a scripture or an inspirational word, much like this devotional that we're doing today. And every opportunity that I had a platform like that, I used it. I was bold and I was unapologetic about my faith. And I really don't intend to give my family any less than that. Like just to paint a picture for you of how I um, was appreciated by my coworkers. So almost two weeks ago to today, I left my job. And on my last day, my coworkers and my supervisors, they took me out to lunch, which was pretty typical. You know, everybody would go out on their last day. Um, but one thing that happened to me that nobody else got, my coworkers blessed me, my team blessed me with an envelope full of cash and cash gift cards. And not one other person on our team received anything like this upon their departure. We might have gotten like a card and we all signed it. And I think once we bought a team gift. But I was the first person that had ever been blessed in this way. And even at my one year mark, they threw me a party and gave me a cash gift card at that time. And nobody else had received that either. I truly believe that God used my coworkers to bless me because everything that I did in that job I did as unto the Lord and not unto them. I mean, they like, you know, a lot of them don't go to church and they don't have the same faith that I have and they're not in full truth. And their idea of having the time, a good time is very different than mine. And then I went to company events that I had to go to, you know, I didn't conduct myself any differently there than I did while I was at home or I was at church with fellowshipping with uh, church family. And they never ridiculed me for that. It never cost me anything because I was always stepping out on faith in that way. And, you know, I'm still trying to find my footing in my new role. But this journey is going to I'm going to benefit in the same way. I am going to find that value, but it's all going to be in what I put in is going to determine what I get out of it. So here are the disclaimers. I've never done this before. I have worked my entire adult life. Um, got married, had two kids in that time frame, and I took my leave, but I always went right back to work. So this is uncharted waters for me. The last time I was home with my kids, both of them were in diapers. So they're not the same kids anymore, and I'm not the same woman that I was anymore. I really don't have any clue what to expect, but the word of God reassures me in Proverbs 16 and 3 that if I commit my actions to the Lord, then my plans will succeed. And what a comfort that is to know that when you seek first the kingdom of God and you put the Lord's agenda before your own, that you do not have to worry about the outcome. You already know how this story is going to end. You know that the victory is the Lord's and therefore the victory is yours. The battle has already been won. We as believers, we just need to put our trust in God and allow him to do what he's always done. So that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to work for. So my husband and I, we made the decision that I'm going to homeschool during the summer to make sure that our son is prepared to start kindergarten in the fall. For those of you who don't know, we're as parents, a lot of us are still waiting to find out if our schools are even opening in the fall. So we'll see what happens with that. But in the meantime, I've got to get him ready. So I've had to buy all kinds of school supplies and, you know, um, activity books and lesson plans, all this stuff. And I have to put work into this. I have to create create outlines and, you know, a plan for what we're going to learn this week and, you know, all that stuff. 
and it is a lot of work. I'm not a teacher by trade. I, I have a degree, but it's not in teaching. So I'm having to teach myself on how to teach him. And it's not just something that I'm able to wing. When I don't put any effort into it and I do it, you know, just to say I did it, he's frustrated. I'm frustrated. My daughter, who sometimes has to suffer through it all, she's frustrated. And it's not a great experience for anybody. But when I do it, because it's the right thing to do, and when I do it right, because that's the kind of attention and energy that it deserves, we all have a good time when we have class time at home. And that's what I really want. I want to invest in my children while I'm here. And I don't want to do it just for the sole purpose of him being ready for school. But these are, these are skills that I can teach him when we have praise and worship before we start school and we pray together. These are things that I can do to set him up for his adult life and his life in the kingdom, doing whatever it is that the Lord is going to put on his heart and my daughter's heart as well for them to do. So in all of this, what I've had to accept is that money is no longer a motivator for me. You know, I'm not going to get paid regardless if my son learns anything from me or not. I'm not going to get, you know, from the physical standpoint of view, there is no reward. I'm not going to receive a parade in my honor. I'm not going to get an award or a bonus. You know, I just have to do it because I need to. And I'm okay with that. I didn't think I would be when this opportunity first kind of this door opened, but I really am okay with that. And that's because I understand that all of the effort that I've put into my life as a stay at home mother my heavenly father sees it and he will reward me in due time, whether it be here on earth or later in heaven. So I heard a cute story a little while ago and it kind of just stuck with me my entire life. So I want to share it with you all. So there's a high school student who plays on the football team and he's an OK player. You know, he's not he's not the superstar, but he's not the worst guy on the team either. Anyway, his father attends every game, but his father is blind. And the only information he has about the game is what the crowd around him is saying. And because he wasn't a real popular kid, a lot of people didn't shout his name. People weren't rooting for him all the time. And every time he went, he just got more and more defeated. Every time he stepped out on the field, he felt like his father couldn't see him succeed. So why try? Well, his father ended up getting sick and passes away. But they were a believing family and they were committed to doing the Lord's work. So the very first game of the season after his father passed away, that boy steps out on the field and played like it was the last game he was ever going to play. And they won and he scored the winning touchdown. And the next game was just like that. And the next and the next and they finish out the season as champions. Now, they asked him later what changed, because when his father was living, he didn't play that well. He didn't play that hard. He didn't play that passionately. And he responded. You play different when you know your father's watching. He believed that after his father passed away, that he received his eyesight in heaven and was able to watch over him on that field. Now, I don't know the origination, uh, the origin, I'm sorry, of that story, but it did stick with me because that's how I plan to live my life. Like my father is always watching me. Your character is who you are when no one's watching. It's who you are when you're behind closed doors and nobody can see what you're doing. So that's my prayer for you today, RCP. Let's step out onto that field of life. Let's play passionately and play hard for our father. And let's do it as unto him and not unto men. Because he is always watching. All right, well, that's all I have for you today. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' name. Bye.